Gentlemen, we are going to investigate the UFO crash at Roswell. Please, stay tuned. Things are going to get a lot clearer. What was that light? Now this, we take you to time. It's Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. Or is it? There's rain. We could be on the 115. Or maybe we're heading to Roswell. how fast those trees are moving by us. This is amazing. February 24th, 1997, at 2.11 actually in the afternoon, Roswell time. And we are darn near in Roswell. And there's another one of the equipment that helped move the debris away. There it is there. That's ice. We've made it to the town of Roswell. There seems to be a big ice storm moving in. Where did you want me to try to park? Parallel park? We come from here in Carlsbad to Roswell. There's Peterborough. We're putting our pin in. And there we are on the pin board. The aliens, what it's all about. Next day, he takes him out, shows him all this crazy, weird wreckage. And you know, everybody's heard the rest of the story. He brings some of the wreckage back the next day. And drops it out, stops off at home, shows it to his son, Jesse Jr., who is important because he's only a medical doctor and a pilot and a flight surgeon. Served in the military aircraft types and investigative teams. Was himself shot down in southeastern Asia. He knows wreckage, and he's never seen anything like that stuff. Anyway, the next day, of course, Jesse goes to the base. Colonel Blanchard, the commander of the final 
29th tells them to take the right to the right field, make a stop at our headquarters, 8th Air Force in Fort Worth, gives the order to Walter Hart to put out the press release, which he did, and the story goes on. 1947, July 1947, I was 11 years old. My birthday was the next month uh, in August, which would have been close to 12 at that time. He uh, came in, woke myself and my mother up, to the hands of the show to us. And uh, he said, he, and I think he said something about flying saucer. At that time, time, I did not know what a flying saucer was, but certainly later found out. I helped him unload from the back of a 1942 Buick several boxes of some metal debris and what looked like pieces of plastic. And uh, again, he was very excited. And he said, this is something you probably know. we'll never see again, but uh, that's why I want to show it to you now. And he dumped the material out on the kitchen floor and started looking at it. Basically, he said, uh, what I want you to do is look for any electronic components like vacuum tubes, wires, condensers, resistors, of which there wasn't any. Uh, the other thing he wanted to do is to see if we could put pieces of it together to get some sort of general form, but there was just too much of the debris. The abduction. Where on earth are the aliens? Not what I would call a good parking job. Imagine that, just taking their heads off and putting them on a table like that. Hope there's another one. This man is the mortician. 
at the time of the incident, the Roswell incident. Hang on for a second. Can I can I just ask you? Were you the were you the gentleman that they claimed to have seen the bodies or no? Well, I was the funeral director, but I didn't see any bodies. They called about the caskets and all that. But and I saw this wreckage in the back of those old ambulances. Yeah, I stay there. You go, want to go, go inside or what? Sure if you want. However you want. What my involvement was that see our funeral home had the uh, contract for all military services. And they were the one that called. Have you seen any documentaries? Oh yeah. They were the ones that called. Want to know about baby caskets and about embalming fluid, what it would do to the to the tissue and the blood and, and stomach contents. And then I got an emergency went out there on the ambulance call. And that's where I said I saw a wreckage in the back of the old ambulance. And then that's where the nurse that came out of the supply room. You remember that? Yeah. Uh -huh and uh, screamed at me to get out of there as fast as I could. And then she was the one who described to me that they had her assisting these two pathologists from Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, D.C. And all they wanted her to do was write down what they were looking at. It wasn't really a nuts up, see, it was a description of what they were seeing, because they flew them on into Walter Reed Hospital after that, out there. Okay. That's the way I got involved in it, through our funeral home. And that was your involvement? Yeah. Super. And I knew her real well. And she drew me a, it's back here in the museum somewhere, she mm -hmm. drew me a diagram on what what those little bodies looked like back there. So, uh, and described Do you believe her? Well, I wouldn't have, but at that time, but at, uh, she was raised in a Catholic convent. From the day she was born, her life was she was going to, supposed to be a, a nun and all this kind of stuff. And she was in St. Paul, Minnesota, went through all the Catholic schools and everything. Now here's a lady that's never been out of St. Paul, Minnesota, over 60 miles her whole life. And raised in that, all she ever knew about was the church and, you know, and she was a registered nurse, but she was uh, taken care of in the pediatrics of sick children and all that. And there, see, they had the St. Mary's Order, had Catholic hospitals all over the United States. Mm -hmm. And this is what she was going to do. The only reason she was in the military because they paid for the last two years of her to be a registered nurse. They paid it. She already was certified to be a teacher, but she wanted to be a nurse. And her parents owed the church a lot of money. And she went into the service. She had to pay them back three years for two years of college. And then she paid her family's debt off. What she wanted to do is pay their debt off. And then she was going to join St. Mary's Order. That's why she was involved in this. So she was a pretty honest individual. And I think I don't think anybody that had that type of life could make up a ridiculous story like what we're talking about now. To have that type of insight. I'm sorry? To have that insight that, you know... Well, she couldn't have described that. Hell, she wouldn't know anything about it. And I was yeah. a dumbass undertaker. I didn't know any different. All I thought an alien was somebody from Mexico who didn't have a passport. That's only alien I ever heard about. All right on. So really, you know, <laughs> I didn't never heard of flying saucers or anything. So do you believe it was at this point now? Well, it's pretty hard when you look and see that everything that we have in here and all the people that have come in and all the people that have been interviewed in the Roswell paper there back in 1947, Roswell Army Fair. I mean, something happened out there. I'm, I've never said it was a UFO because I don't know. Right. But, there's but I believe his old ranchers, I buried most of them. and, and uh, that were involved in the crash site. They say something happened out there. Now, something happened, but none of us know whether it was a UFO or what it was. It was, could have been some military, you know, it's gone wrong. Have you had contact with anybody who said they've had contact oh, with yeah, the actual people, aliens? You get people in here that say they were on the debris, cleaning up the debris and all this kind of stuff. Okay. And you get people that, we have all kinds of people on abductions and people that, you know, like that that will give you these stories. Right. There's too much out there for something that they've got to be in it. Hell, when one out of every seven adult in the United States has seen something, a UFO, that's an unidentified object, there's got to be something up there. You know that. When you got Gordon, one of the Cooper that's coming out, one of the astronauts coming out, and we've got a notice from his publisher, he's coming out with a book telling you all about the, the UFOs that are up there when they were up there. Wow. So it's going to be interesting to understand. So it's just the beginning at this point. Just beginning to start now. You got a guy by the name of Colonel Corso that was on 
on MacArthur staff in the Philippines that saw UFOs and all of the troops. And back in this was back in 43, 41, somewhere in there. Then you